Well, good morning. Thank you so much. It's good to be home. I want to thank the band for uh, all their efforts this morning and what they do for us each week. We sure want to appreciate them. Thank you guys for your hard work. And also thank you Jack Stone, his wife, for uh, the special music this morning. We were blessed. Um, I don't know, uh, I didn't think I need being baptized again, but evidently Pat and some of my lay pastors thought I did. They tried to push me down in there with them. So, uh, guys, I'm good right now, I think, so appreciate that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings you continue to send our way. Father, we thank you for the blessings to come that you have promised in your word. Father, today I pray that you would just move me over, that uh, I would be standing behind you. What they see and hear today would be what came from you through me, Father God, that it wouldn't be about me, it would be about you. Father, we thank you for everyone here this morning. And uh, we pray that we lift this service to you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Well, the trip to Branson with the youth kids was a lot of fun. We've been gone for uh, last week. We got a chance, my wife and Heath here and uh, myself, got to take uh, 10 kids to Branson, Missouri for a youth trip. And, you know, we saw a lot of beautiful sights. Uh, enjoyed some great shows including, if you've never seen it, the production of Jonah, which was just a remarkable show to go see. And we had some uh, great fun, along with some spending some time with God and in His Word. So there was a lot of good things happen. You know, uh, I've never driven a go-kart that will run 40 miles an hour. And evidently, some of these youth kids haven't either. I actually believe that women were created to be demolition derby drivers because some of these girls acted just like that. I mean, we had a blast, and it was a good time. And, you know, by spending time with uh, 10 kids, and I say kids, they're teenagers for five days, I learned a lot what it looks like these days to look through the eyes of a kid again. Saw some remarkable stuff. I also learned... Uh, about the different things that teenagers see as uh, what's most important in their lives. You would be amazed or surprised at what teenagers this day consider most important in their lives. But what I've observed through the whole week with these uh, teenage kids is that uh, all of them need the same thing. Even if it's not what's most important in their life, they all need exactly the same thing. I'd like to share something with you that I've saved in my files here for probably a little over a year. And because it was sent to me again while we were in Branson, I felt that God would like for me to share it with you. Let me see if I can find it here. This is called, and some of you may have heard it before, but it's called the Magic Bank Account. It says, imagine that you had won the following prize in a contest. Each morning, your bank would uh, deposit $86,400 in your private account for your use. However, this prize, prize that you're about to receive, it does have rules to it. The set of rules go like this. Everything that you didn't spend during each day would be taken away from you. So the bank's going to give you $86,400 and everything that you cannot spend, they're going to empty your account every day. You may not simply transfer the money into someone else's account. It's your account. So you can't transfer it. You can only spend it. $86,400 every day. Each morning when you wake up, the bank opens your account with another $86,400. So you're getting that every day. One of the rules to the game is the bank can end the game without warning at any time. They can say, game over. You know, we've done this, now it's all over. We're not going to do any more. They can close your account right then and you won't receive another dime. So, you're going to receive the $86,400 each day and it's going to be fresh each day. So the account's going to be emptied what would you personally do if you, were, if you won that prize? 
what would most people do? Well, you'd probably buy anything and everything you wanted, right? Because you have to get rid of the money. You cannot hang on to it because you know at the end of the day, the account's going to be emptied out. So sure, you would spend it on everything, probably in anything you wanted. Not only for yourself, but for people you love and care for, even for people you don't even know. Even someone that might be a homeless person. Even someone that you just might see walking down the street. Since you know way, possibly, some of you might be able to, could sit, spend all that money, you would feel free to start giving it away. And empty that account every day because you don't want to lose any of it. You want to make sure that the bank doesn't retain it and you don't lose any of it. You'd probably try to spend every penny and use it all because you knew it wasn't going to be there the next day. It's not like a savings account. It's a daily account. So you've got to figure out ways to give it away. And I'm sure many of us would do that. We had some kids up in Branson. We talked about this. They said, well, I give the money to the church. I said, amen. Amen, Amen, right? But you had to give it away. And actually, this is a real game. It's not a made-up game. It's a real game. And each of us is already a winner of the prize. Each and every one of you have already won the prize. We just can't seem to see it. Like I say, many of you may have heard this, or you may know what I'm talking about, but the prize you are about to receive is time. Time. Each morning when you awaken, God gives you 86,400 seconds as a gift of life. Every day, everyone receives exactly the same. 86,400 seconds of life. And when you go to sleep at night, any remaining time that's left, it's gone. It's not credited to you or credited to us. You don't get that back. Each day, God gives everybody the same. But once you lay down at night, it starts all over again the next day. What we haven't used up that day is forever lost. Amen? Yesterday is forever gone. It's pretty well told that. Each morning the account is refilled, but the bank, which is God, can dissolve your account at any time without warning. He can take it all away. So what will you do now that you know you have a prize of $86,400 every day? If you've never looked at it that way, what would you do with that? Because the 86,400 seconds are worth a lot more than $86,400. Amen? Because it is your life. And it means so much more. Those seconds are worth more than they could ever could be in dollars. Think about it in this way. And remember that you need to enjoy every second of life. I read a deal that they talked about a millisecond how important a millisecond is. I mean, a tiny little old piece of a second. How important it is. And people go, well, that's not really that important. Ask an Olympic skier. Ask someone that's running track against time what a millisecond can do for their life. Absolutely, it is very, very important. So basically, the story says that you need to take care of yourself, be happy, love deeply, and enjoy life. The author of this particular story here is a unknown. But I found it interesting because this particular story was found in the billfold coach Paul Bear Bryant in Alabama after he died in 1962, um, 1982. So he valued this story and he valued his life and everyone else's very, very much so. But this is what I observed uh, that all kids are in need of. They're in need of your time. They're not in need of what you part-time them. They're in need of all your time. And it's the most important time. And not only is time that you have that God gives you, the 86,400 seconds that God gives you, not only is that important for your kids, that's important for your family and your friends. It goes beyond there, and it's a very, very important thing to hang on to. Time is the most precious gift God has given us. Would you turn with me to James, chapter 4, 
beginning at verse 13. James chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Now, it says, now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to, go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you, don't, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Very well put. You are a mist. Now, even if you ask someone that lives to be over 100 years old, they will tell you, that is a short period of time. That is a short period of time. God put us here to do work for Him, for His glory, His purpose. And we have a very short period of time to do it. So time is one of the most valuable things. You know, since you know you're here for a short period of time, how you use that time that you never get back daily is very, very important. I'm sure many of you have had loved ones that have passed on. And that you wish that you would have spent just a little bit more time with that individual, especially if that individual passed on suddenly. My dad and his cousin and myself, we spent almost almost the entire year each week going out fishing. The following year after that, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. And after a battle with cancer for about 16, 18 months, he passed away. And i got to be honest with you. I would not give anything for that one year. That I had that opportunity to spend time with him. And not only him, his cousin. But you know, it's something that we enjoyed. And, and to this day, even when my dad passed on... It's, it's those memories of that time that God gave me. Understand, it's the time God gave me to spend with my dad. Because you've got to remember, God knows the future, the present, and everything else. Okay, So God knew what's going on. And I'm sure at that time, by me actually not being walking with God, I realized that he gave me a gift. And I didn't appreciate that gift till I come to know the Lord better. Now I realize what that's all about. And each one of you probably experienced exactly the same thing in your life somewhere down the line. So time is very, very important to us. We all tend to get in a hurry. We always do that. And we get in a hurry about everything but the right things. And yet you can all agree, I'm guilty as anyone about being in a hurry to do everything and sometimes overlooking the right thing. Your relationship with God your family, and your friends is what should be top priority that you spend your time on. I've had so many people come to me and go, you don't know my life. You don't know what that's like. I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. Don't ever tell me you don't have time. Because I'm the master of saying that for years. The deal is we don't make time. We don't make time for the right things. We have the time. If we set it aside. If it's something very, very important to you in your life, you're going to make time for it. Man, when it comes time to go fishing in the mornings, you know, I can get up at 5.30, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock. I don't have any problem. I can get up and I can get gone. But during the week when I have to get up and go to work, I don't get up. It's 8.30 sometimes. You know, I sleep late. It's because I've kind of got my priorities out of line a little bit. Well, I think I do. My wife thinks I do. <laughs> Priority, what's important in your life? You make time for what you really, really think is the most important in your life. The country band Alabama had a number one song several years ago that described uh, the common lifestyle of today's generation. The chorus, go, chorus goes like this. I'm in a hurry to get things done. I rush and rush until life's no fun. All I really got to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and I don't know why. Good words. Some of us are in a big hurry and we really don't know why. Because we're giving up some things each day that we can't get back. Each day that we'll never be able to get back. You know, when you have small children, as, as I have, 
when they're small and they start growing up a little bit, you know, you say, well, they're growing up and, you know, you think you got plenty of time. But the next minute you turn around and you look and they're grown. Just like that. And there are times that you wish you could go back and you could, you could have more time to really spend with them because you didn't spend that quality time that you need to spend with them. Same thing with your family, your mom and dad, your loved ones. You know, all of us have been there. I, I wish I had more time with my mom that's passed on. You know, uh, I do entirely wish I had more time with my dad. But I think God used those situations to say, hey, it's not too late. It's not too late for you to start spending time on the right things. Pay attention to the right things. I own my own company. I, I, I work for myself, so, you know, I, I tend to get involved in that and sometimes put some of that ahead of uh, other things that I should be doing. But now that uh, I've become a, a pastor at a church, I understand how valuable that time is, not just with my family, but with my family here at the church. Some people say, I can't understand why you and your wife spend so much time doing things for the church. Well, every time we're invited to go somewhere, well, we got something going on at the church, or we got we got to do this and do that, you know, and people really don't understand that. We do take time for ourselves, but we do understand that God deserves all of our time because he gave us all of our time, amen? So we should focus on it that way. God gave us our families. God gave us our friends. These are the important things in life. All the other things are just mere to that. They're, they're just tiny compared to that. Time is truly our most per- precious resource that we could ever have. It's perishable and it's irreplaceable. The quality, joy, and impact of our lives are directly related to how wisely we use the time God has given us. Good statement. And that's so true. When reading about the life of Jesus, it seems that uh, he never was in a hurry. Never got in a hurry. Although he was doing the most important job in history, you know, Jesus knew he only had a few years to complete the task that he had, but he never ran. He knew that people were the most important thing in his life and that he could spend his time on people. He took time for them. And he loved them. And you know, some of the times that you tell someone, hey, brother or sister, I love you. You can say it, but your actions mean a whole lot more when you spend time with them, showing them that you actually love them, as Jesus did. And where you invest your time reveals what's most important to you. Woo! Well, you got to look at that, and then you think, oh, my gosh. Man, I've been investing my time heavily in this, so evidently this must be what's most important to me. That's true. You know, you can't save time. You can only invest it. We know, without a doubt, that there's not enough time for all things. Each one of us know that. There's not enough time for all things. But there is enough time for the most important thing. We just got to find the time. Guess it comes down to what you classify in your life as important. Sometimes the things most people consider important are not important at all. So maybe uh, what we're saying here, maybe some of us need to reevaluate the way we spend our time and what we spend it on. Some of you may remember the early soap opera, Days of Our Lives. I know that I have never watched a single episode, but I do remember my mom watching it. So we got to hear that uh, program's music, the musical theme that they always have that kind of draws you in and gets you there. And the voice of the announcer when he would say, like sands through an hourglass, so are the days of our lives. (laughs) Boy, some of you showing your age here. These kids over here are going, what? And you think about that, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's right. He's right. Sand never runs uphill in, a, in an hourglass, right? 
You can turn it over and start again. It's kind of like the 86,400 seconds God's gave us. You can turn it over and start again. But every time it passes through, it's done. It's done. That time's gone. You're never going to get it back. Benjamin Franklin said, Do not squander time, for it is the stuff life is made of. Amen. Good words. We're told in Ecclesiastics that there is a time for everything. Let's turn there. Ecclesiastics, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Ecclesiastics, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time for peace. There's a time for everything. The question today would be is what are you spending your time on? What's most important to your, in your life today? Do a soul search there. All of us could use a little reevaluation there and say, maybe I'm spending way too much time here in this area of my life. And sometimes in those areas of your life, that might be a time that you're spending in a sinful nature. It's time to give that up because those sinful natures is what destroys family and friends and separates you from God. Your time is more, more important than just the way we see it. I'd like to close with this quote this morning. Just treasure every moment that you have. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you giving thanks, Father God, just for the blessings you continue to provide. We thank you for the favor you show on your church house here and the church members here, Father God. We thank you for coming in, sitting among us this morning, Father, that your presence be felt. I pray, Father, that um, everything I said today reflected straight from you and not from me. And Father, that uh, we would take the time to be in worship with you and prayer with you. And Father, that we would put our time to good use. That we would spend it on the important things and not the least important things. But Father, that we would focus on people that we would love them by giving them that piece of our time that you request us to do. Father, we love you. I pray today that everything we said and did here was uplifting and glorifying to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.